we got a discovery. We've got a vintage. We've got the mystery wreck convertible. Don't come past this point without tetanus shot and bubonic plague shot. Came out to Old Farmstead today. This is going to be auctioned here in a bit, so today is just kind of my walkthrough for the preview. Old, old farm, cars, trucks, tractors. Some of this stuff been used pretty recently and then, say that, but probably the last 10, 15 years. And then some of it been sitting around quite a long while. The old guy had a thing for his Cadillacs. There's supposed to be an older one in the barn. We'll go check out. One of the cars listed on the sale flyer that looks like didn't make it out in the row advertised a 59 Chevy. And so that's one that I'm real interested in. So we're going to walk around the place, see about trying to find it. Got the Chevy 4x4 is actually pretty close to rust free. I've been starting to part these trucks out and we're starting to pick up a little bit of interest. Old Cadillac probably has a dead North Star. A lot of them got cooked. Just weren't a very good engine. You could get about life of three of those run about as long as one of these old pickups would <laughs> showing 22,000 miles which I don't know surely that's turned over but you never know that thing's gotta have more miles on it than that. Another about a 94, 95 Cadillac. That one should be a North Star as well. Good when they're running, bad when they're not running. 63. Chevy C10 long bed. Factory black's kind of neat. They locked up all these vehicles when they put them away and not entirely sure where the keys are. Pretty straight truck. You can buy all the panels for these. Black's fairly easy color to spot in. So that truck is certainly a restorable vehicle. This old Chevy, about a 77, 78, somewhere in there. It's the Bonanza. I think it was kind of one of the middle trim levels. See, it's got the propane. A lot of sticks and rat nest and junk. Pretty clean inside. Little mousy. Tilt column AC. C60. That's an inline six truck. Fuel pump is behind the mount. I always have to look them up. 250, 292. Little Jeep pickup. They must have had something really corrosive in the bed of this thing. It's pretty rusted out. Pretty crittered up inside. 
automatic truck, 360 V8. That one should be about a 1970. Kind of a neat truck. 74 Olds Delta 88 Royale. This one came out of one of the garages up by the house. Look around all that. They're pretty packed full of stuff. Locked up so you really not even going to try and see it in the inside, but white interior. See it a little better there. Really pretty clean car. Have to evict the rats. Always think of Sam Raimi movies whenever I see one of these. Spider-Man, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. There's like 50 movies that he's directed and he loved his of course, this was a 73, but this is close enough. Loved a 73 enough that he put cameo shots in each of those movies, and some of the car was pretty much a character itself. He loved it so much, he gave it an appearance. John Deere Planner. Kawasaki KLT three-wheeler. Those are starting to get some collector value. Lots of toppers. Got a Massey 410 combine. And over here, a couple of farm malls. Believe F20. Regular. These were pulled out of the barns. It was kind of a halfway usable John Deere planter if somebody fixed it up. Or it could just be parts. Manure spreader. A lot of your Amish guys buy them and still use them. International Harvester Planner. Old scoops, a little bit better than shoveling by hand, not by much. Old Ferguson for parts. Nice steel rack if somebody's doing fabrication and that sort of thing. Another Ford tractor, international Farm all 400. A couple more of the Fords. Dutes Alice 916. Modern John Deere. Drove the Dakota today. Finally got that thing back, it had a bad ECU. It was funny when we replaced that, it solved a lot of problems all at once. See a, about a 100 year old farmhouse with about a 50 year old addition on the back. And around we go to have a look in the sheds. A 
Pack rats have been busy, busy. Guy will need to kind of be careful. There's probably still live ones be disturbed moving any of us around. There's the older Cadillac, 77, 8, 9, 45 year old car. Old wood, more rat nest. Got a 78, should be Ford Fairmont Futura. Looks like the kids broke the glass out of that one. It is starting to become collectible cars. A lot of stuff shared with the Fox Mustangs. Pretty neat, that one's a manual transmission car. You don't see that real, real often. I drove a powder blue 1980 Fairmont four-door to college and it was a terrible old car. 2.3, four-cylinder, of course, they borrowed that from the Pinto parts bin, and that thing just wasn't enough to move that car around. It didn't help that it was pretty choked with carbon, and the carburetor wasn't very good. So it eventually started overheating for some reason and blew a head gasket. And my mom lived about six, seven miles from work, and she could drive it there. It'd be just starting to get into the red by the time she got there. She'd park it, work all day, drive it home. It'd be just getting into the red when she got it home. And that was her work car for probably half a year. And then one day in the morning, it just wouldn't start. And so it went away. That's my Fairmont story. The old barn, lots of old used up junk, but you always got to look, you never know what'll be hiding. Kind of a weird one, big roll of barbed wire that that tree grew up to, it's totally tight. <laughs> Ah, oh, here we go. These are early accessory Ford Motor Company seat belts, the aluminum latch. And they should, on the bottom, have a Fomoco. Pretty hard to see it, but those are factory belts. They got the clamps. And then these. Yep, Chevrolet, missing the emblem. And these are made by Irving Air Chute. And that was just a aircraft adaptation to vehicles. Thought if you'd strap into a plane, you might as well strap into a car. So these are pre-federal mandate, like late 50s to 63 and then 64 front lap belts were mandated so then you had your standardized ones across all the car lines and then not sure a few years later they've mandated the rear lap belts and then shoulder belts in the late 60s and then retractor belts like we know them today were mandated in 74 so anybody with an early car, those belts are definitely a good piece to add to a restoration. And guys will pay up for them. Empty barn. Pulled out a car or tractor or something from there. 
kind of an odd little what is this thing Amy portable disc roller rolls them on the plow Okay, old 50, I think, Chevy truck. Got the pull down door handles, no vent windows. Then, believe this is a Moline UT tricycle tractor. That thing's pinned in on all four sides with the trees, at least three sides, anyway. Depending on your angle, a little parallax involved. Pretty neat old Nash, 53. Ambassador Super. Neat car. I always thought these were neat with the fairings over the wheels, front and rear. Kind of makes them look like a oversized kid's toy of that era. This was, of course, American Motors, Nash Kelvinator Corporation, Kelvinator Fridges. Look at the dash in that thing. Super cool. And then the steering wheel you could mistake for a Cadillac, which I'm sure they intended to do. With the cool little wing speakers on the ends of the dash. And then, of course, the front seat that folds down into the bed. Super, super neat. Catch the back. Wow, that thing was driven all the way till late 70s. Probably 78, 79. So somebody definitely got their money's worth out of that car. New Holland Baylor. Partial Probably an H or an M. GMC 73, 74. It's not too bad of a truck for parts. Bad truck for restoration. Pretty rusty, but a lot of what's missing on a basket case. Pull off of that and piece one back together. Lion's share of these vehicles are locked. Still got the tailgate on it. 57 Bia cub caps in the back. Kind of neat, they hand hammered these little patches, put them all over the barn. Oh wow, another 1946 license plate they patched it with. They're pretty resourceful. Farmall M. Super M. Concrete weights they made out of old steel wheels. It's actually not a bad idea. Better idea than filling them with calcium. 
tricycle tractor been sitting very very common these were kind of an icon of post-war production so they made millions of them Back this way. Lost in the woods. You need a tetanus shot, maybe a bubonic plague shot. You're gonna go shopping in here on auction day. 58 Pontiac Star Chief. Pretty attractive colors. Silver, white two-tone. Of course, in the 50s, you had a lot of aviation themes really popping up on these cars. These old fender ornaments, kind of reminiscent of some of the long range bombers. Now, this is a four door hardtop, so there's no center pillar. Side trim, super neat. It's kind of rusty, probably a parts car. Either is a parts car or it needs a parts car. Now look at that. Cool pack air conditioning. Believe that was dealer installed. And you could get that on the Chevrolets, Pontiacs. They just change out the little badge on the top there the cool little twin ashtrays popped out crank window car pretty basic does have power brakes horn rings unbroken a lot of good parts in this one I'm just like anybody else, hate to see one of these old cars die, but at the same time, kind of got to be realistic about what's involved in restoring one, and you kind of got to be realistic about what else is out there to pick from. So a car like this, probably realistically sell for five, six, seven hundred dollars, and yeah, a person could restore it. I mean, if this was a 58 Bonneville, uh, there'd be no question, yeah, it'd be worth it. If it had some sort of sentimental value, then, you know, if it's grandpa's car, definitely worth that, unless it's just totally rusted into the ground and crumbling away. But something like this, you know, it's it's justifiable, just not going to be for everybody. You got to have the finances, you got to have the place to do it, you got to have the skill set, and a lot of that all has to come together to make the reality. And that's not to say, you know, a car doesn't have to be totally pristine restored to enjoy it either this is one that person could work on mechanically put an interior in it and leave the patina and just drive the thing and enjoy it the trunk's pretty solid pretty neat dealer badge byron stout's been gone a long time Schofield came after them, late 60s, I think, and they pretty much lasted as long as the brand. I think Pontiac's last year was 08. Neat car. Next guy will decide what to do with it. Lots and lots of piles. Look through these wheel rims and tractor grills and 
Who knows what all's hiding in them. There's an old, looks like John Deere plow that the tree's totally taken over. Got a 69 Oldsmobile. Delta 88. Four door hard top. Just not a very collectible car. Not terribly much you can really do with one or sell off of one. Parked about 70. It's a yellow sticker, 77, 78. Of course, the rats have partied hard in it. If somebody had one that had sentimental value and it was wrecked, I mean, the whole front clip is nice. Whole car's there, pick parts off of. But the justification, get this thing all the way out of here and then sit on it and part it. Unfortunately, probably further outside of the target zone of where we're at right now. Another plow. Look at that thing all the way down. That thing has been there a long time. Another farm all, either regular or F20. Now this old Chevy pickup. Well, farm truck, medium duty. I believe this is a 36 low cab. From what I've heard guys say. I don't know a huge amount about these trucks, but this is the later one of the series and it's got your single roof welded in the cab you can see that's the factory lead seam down there whereas your earlier ones your 34 35 this whole top stamping was separate and so that should mean that this one is all steel and not wood and from what I can tell that's what we're looking at there pretty basic truck just not a whole lot of features on it little fun fact about these the 36 cars were the same way Late in the model year, they switched over to all steel. So early 36 car, early 36 truck, structural wood in the body, and then late 36 is going to be all steel. So this is significantly more desirable truck for restoration. You've got a nice, tight, solid, squeak-free cab, even after laying in the woods for many decades whereas a wood body one you really gotta take them down and clean all the panels up and put the new wood in and that's definitely a labor of love that's not something to flip and make money on but that's not always the primary reason for restoring one of these great great patina on this truck Got the old yellow paint weathered down. You could put a coat of wax on that and really get it to pop again. Probably came out of a 
service fleet or construction or something like that. So you can see they've sanded down the doors, would have had probably a company name, and then more than likely this would have been like a unit number in their fleet. So who knows what that thing started out as. Dump truck, concrete truck, Coca-Cola bottling truck, you just never know. But whatever bed it began life with got peeled off and they put the wood bed on the back and it served its life out in farm duty. And so it's waiting to be bought at the auction and be reborn for chapter three of its story. Another thing about those wood Chevrolets, so General Motors had a thing of buying out their suppliers. So like Harrison used to be an outside supplier for radiators, thermostats, heaters, heater cores, GM bought them up, then they manufactured all that stuff for GM vehicles. Delco was a separate company, Remy was a second, separate company. They merged, I want to say like 27 or so, I think that's right. And so if you find a real, real old, like 100 year old starter or generator, distributor generator, some of them, they'll have just the Delco name or just the Remy name. So GM bought them up and all their other like Saginaw steering, all the other companies and they also bought up an entire forest in Georgia. And right about that time was when all steel body construction started to really become a thing. So, I mean, Dodge and Ford were already all steel back in the 20s. And the GM gang, they were pretty stubborn. They wanted to amortize that forest all the way down before they took it off the books. And so that's why they clung on to wood body vehicles another probably five, 10 years longer than a lot of other major manufacturers did, which is pretty significant to say for the world's largest, you know, dominant car building company at the time. But that was just the reason why it was the corporate structure and so that has a lot to do with how those cars were built and what's involved to restore one of them today. Oh, and there it is. So not a 59. This is the 60 Bel Air. It's a four door car. You could get a four-door hardtop Bel Air in 60 and in 59. Catalog name for those was the sports sedan. Pretty straight, complete car. Again, one of those clearly not justifiable to restore. The 58 Pontiac's debatable. A 60 Chevy four-door sedan is really not. I mean, the market on a 60 is not quite what a 59 is. And being a four-door sedan, just gonna be parts car. It's got kind of a unique rooftop carrier. Probably take your canoe out to the lake with this car. Something like this sure could tell stories. Actually really a solid car, that whole tail pan and that tag pocket, those always rust out. That's in real good shape. This side real straight. Automatic car, that steering column, desirable piece. All complete except the radio and seat upholstery. Pretty sure 
This car's been flooded. You can see the silt. Kind of about even there. Man, there's an antique. Look at this. We got a discovery. We've got a vintage banjo steering wheel on the ground. What is it? With the spinner. Look at that. 46 Chevy banjo. Is it? Pontiac. 46 Pontiac banjo wheel. Covered in flood silt. that right back down I believe that basic wheel would work for a Chevy you can see here coming off that field these little troughs where the water ran. So in a really rainy, wet year, where I'm standing probably would have been at least ankle deep, if not knee deep. Flooded the old Chev out. Pretty close to finished with the tour. Let's take a quick look through. Other than those seat belts, really haven't seen any car parts so far, other than just wheels and there's an old flake steering wheel, kind of cool. Neat to find, but they repro them, so there's not a huge amount of market for old one like that that you find. But it is an actual vintage part, something that would have been on an old car. So somebody's wanting to build on with the patina and actual old look to it, that'd be a good one to have. A bunch of old parts and items. Here's a couple vintage fans. I always look on these. So your date code 1976, so that's after muscle car era. It's a pretty nice eaten clutch. Those are pretty common and reproed. And this one, spare eaten clutch. Some of those muscle car guys, they want the right dated stuff. Starters, alternators, always take a look at. That's Mark 77, which is probably. Probably correct. Always check them out just to see. Old tractor cabs, wheel rims. We'll dig through these a little more. I mean, any of this stuff they thought they could use, they just kind of left. Some people consider it sloppy, some people consider it resourceful, and there's kind of a balance in between. But out here in the country, not like you have to really impress anybody. Just want to get work done. There's striped panels. Thought they were maybe pieces of signs, but they're, I think, actually just like an old garden shed. I might buy those. It'd be fun to paint on and turn into signs.
Another one of these farm all M's. Trees caught a hold of the seat. Deep freeze home freezer. That's a big one. Huge. We've got the Mystery Wreck Convertible. What is that thing? Wow. Don't come past this point without tetanus shot and bubonic plague shot. <laughs> Some old, I think, double A truck wheels. Kind of scared to dig in here. I don't want to dislodge a critter. And these old truck spare tire carriers have some potential on eBay. is going to be 69 or 70 Buick Electra 225 convertible crashed pretty hard somebody wadded the frame and the body all up come around and look at this body tag 48467 this is a 69 electric convertible. Could be some parts still on that one, but again, you just got to weigh what's involved getting it out and getting it home. Not impossible to do, especially if you make friends with the scrap guys on these auctions. Tip them a little either cash or leftover junk and parts that you get that you don't want. You can always save a little time and get a little help with loading. It's vintage bicycles, piece of a crate. or a crate imitator, which in that time, there were a lot of. This is a Challenger bicycle. I don't know a huge amount of bikes, so don't have a guess who built the Challenger. If you know or if you had one, leave a comment and let us know. So I think this is gonna be about the end of the tour, we've seen the buildings, the vehicles, walk past the farmhouse. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off, conclude this video, and check back. This will obviously be part one, the walk around. Part two will show auction action. We'll see who shows up at the sale, and we'll see what anybody buys. Now you guys would have roasted me like crazy for walking past this, which I did. Not showing it, so I catch it coming through. This is kind of a neat little kid's toy. Probably battery operated. Launched the little car. Loose rip off of a Torino mixed with a GTO, mixed with a Charger, mixed with an AMX. Kind of a cool shelf sitter, even if it doesn't work.